This is the brand new OnePlus Open, and it solves four of the main problems that I see with folding phones today. The first one, if you think about any folding phone out there, there's four things that, that really they don't do right. One is the aspect ratio. Samsung in particular has a really skinny one that just doesn't feel usable, and, and it kind of ties into the name. Everyone else calls theirs the fold, meaning you use it when it's open, and then you fold it when you're done. And this is the OnePlus Open, which kind of is a little subtle nuance there, but if you think about it, it implies that you use it on the outside, and then when you want to do more, when you need the multitask, you open it. And, and, and that's exactly what this is meant to do, and it does it really well. The next drawback on most other folding phones is the durability. A lot of people complain about that. They're rated for 400,000, which is like maybe three or four years, and this is rated for two and a half times that, rated one million folds on that hinge. The other drawback is, of course, the price coming in at $1,800 for the Pixel Fold, whereas this one is a lot cheaper. I'll talk about the price a little bit later in this video. And then lastly, the cameras on most folding phones are not flagship great. Like they're always just a notch below that compared to the flagships from that lineup. And OnePlus here seems to really be giving us even better cameras than their other flagship phones. So there's a lot to talk about with this phone, but I've been using it for the past three weeks. And there's actually a lot that I, I really like about it. So let's start off with the design on the phone. There's a lot to talk about here, but on the back, it comes in two different colors. We have a black right here, which is a fake leather. It doesn't scratch. It's actually really durable from my past three weeks of using this, but there's also a green version as well. This is a boxier design all the way around, uh, which makes really a lot of sense to me because the Pixel Fold has those two, like it's a lot rounder and it kind of gives you like a weird bump on the top, whereas this feels like more like a solid phone when you use it while it's closed. They did bring the alert slider back, so I'm super excited to have that. Now the behavior of the hinge is pretty interesting. So if you open it, about 15 degrees is where it starts to kind of grab, and then it'll stay like that. It stays pretty stiff until you get to about 135 degrees, and then it springs all the way flat. So it is, in some sense, spring-loaded to stay flat. The weight of this is, is really ideal. It's incredibly light. It's actually lighter than an iPhone 14 Pro, and it's also very, very thin when you open it. If you look at the back, the camera is definitely a chunky piece that sticks out. It, it looks like a, a giant dial, but we'll get into a camera test and see if it's worthy of all that space. And of course, the rest of this phone, like we're getting fast charging on here, 67 watts in typical OnePlus style. This is a 6.3 inch display, normal aspect ratio, very nice to use. It's 120 hertz. It's a 2K display with some really great color on here. And so like using this as a normal phone, even if you never opened it, it would be a solid experience. But when you open it, you get this massive display that unlike the Pixel Fold, this one opens flat. There's a very, very minimal crease, probably among the best I've seen out there. And there are a couple factors making this phone lighter. One of them is that it doesn't use stainless steel. Instead, they said it had some alloys, so I assume that means aluminum uh, and probably some composites in there as well, some other plastics. But again, like it feels light and it seems to be pretty durable from using it for the past three weeks now. It also has a 4,800 milliamp hour battery, so that's a little bit smaller than some of the competition. Not by much, this does get really, really bright on the inside display. So if you're using that a lot, I think you're going to struggle to get a, a long battery life out of this. But one of the big drawbacks, the first big drawback that I found with this is that it actually doesn't have wireless charging. So on a premium flagship phone like this, which this one actually does cost less than a lot of the other folding phones, but still it's an expensive phone to not have wireless charging feels like a huge miss. Now I know on the Pixel Fold, the wireless charging pad is like very close to the camera bump because it's a shorter phone, so it's hard to use a lot of wireless chargers, but, but still, it's something that can supplement your battery. You're sitting at your desk, you just set it on a charger. You don't have to always plug it in. It's a way that I usually manage my battery on, on most of my other phones that I've ever used. So that's miss number one. Miss number two, the USB-C on the bottom doesn't have video output. It seems like such an obvious feature that's becoming more and more popular. Samsung DeX, Motorola is doing this. Like there's a lot of phones that are doing that. It seems like they should be adding that. And then the third drawback with the physical design of this phone is that you can't actually use a pen with this. Despite having such an awesome design and, and, and it'd be so useful to be able to write on this, the OnePlus pen is not compatible with this, at least not right now. But again, this is the first gen foldable for OnePlus, so maybe next year they'll have pen support. It's not it's not a deal breaker. I don't have a pen with my Pixel Fold, but it's something I would like to see. So this camera bump on the back is, is pretty gigantic, but it would be worth it to have that if the cameras like really justified it. So looking at the cameras, I'm not a big specs guy. I think specs don't really matter on phone cameras. It matters so much more 
how it's actually implemented. So starting off with the ultra wide lens, this has autofocus. It's also 48 megapixels. And as you can see, it does a pretty solid job. It's not the most consistent when you're doing videos and zooming between lenses. You'll see it gets darker and then suddenly switches over to the main lens. But Regardless, the photos are consistent enough. This also does have the ability to shoot 4K in all the lenses, which is fantastic. A lot of previous OnePlus phones would like drop down to 1080p for the ultra wide lens. I don't know why they did that, but but it's nice that we have consistency here. The main lens has a really nice natural bokeh. Overall, I really like the colors on here. It's 64 megapixels, so you can crop in and still have a pretty usable photo here. And one weird thing, like, I mean, you're gonna get weird artifacts in some photos, but look at this one right here. You'll see that even though I really like the color, I like the sharpness, I like the bokeh, just a great shot in my opinion. And, and by the way, I was using this open, so you use like the cover display to take the photo, but it blacked out like three of the light bulbs. I don't know why it decided that those light bulbs shouldn't be there. And, and in the other photos, it didn't do that. Like those light bulbs, I promise, were actually there but it just didn't do that in this photo. So maybe that was like a little software bug, who knows, maybe that's gonna be fixed. But we also have a telephoto lens. Now this, careful on, on the marketing with this because they're gonna advertise it as 6X, but it's actually a 3X lens that is 48 megapixels and you can crop it in so you have a 12 megapixel 6X shot. Take that as you will. This also technically zooms up to 120X, but I mean, you're just cropping in so far, it ends up being like a one megapixel photo by then. So it's pretty useless once you get in that far. Regardless, I was happy that OnePlus didn't do the same thing that everyone else is doing foldables, where they kind of dial back the cameras. This feels a lot like the flagship cameras we saw on other OnePlus phones. In fact, this is even better than a lot of other OnePlus cameras, which like I was happy to see. Like imagine if the Z Fold 5 had the same camera setup as the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I think it would be a way better phone. And then we get into the software and the UI. Now I'm not gonna dive into everything on this UI, but there are a couple big optimizations that OnePlus made here that other phones just didn't make. So one thing that they did that the Pixel Fold didn't do is they force apps into full screen, which is great. You can use like any app and not have Google Pixel's black bars on either side. The second thing they did, and this is a huge one, is they give you this really cool multitasking mode where if you open two apps in split screen, you can actually just move that and have basically one app take up the whole screen and the other one take up a little sliver and just tap on that side and switch really easily between them. And you can actually do this with up to three apps that are either all side by side or you can have two side by side and one below them. And the third thing they added on here is the recents folder. So on the bottom, that little taskbar that we have on foldables is recents. And these are recent documents, recent photos, recent anything you've done recently on your phone is going to be there. So if you take a photo and then you're in Gmail, for example, you can simply tap on recents and then tap and drag that photo in and it'll paste it as, a, as an attachment on your email. And you're getting all the other typical OnePlus stuff on here, like relax and Zen mode. Zen mode's actually a pretty big one where you can like lock your phone for like 120 minutes while you focus and, and just have no distractions at all. Um, we also have the smart sidebar, kind of copied from Samsung to be honest, but nice to see that there. And of course you do floating windows. They claim this as spatial audio as well, which is kind of weird. Feels like stereo audio to me, kind of like, yeah, you have a bunch of speakers on here, but they actually did perform way better than I expected. Like, I'll, I'll show you. Let's get into a little speaker test. I think that's probably the best way to demonstrate this. Now for reference, here's the Pixel Fold. When I was originally planning this video, I wanted to talk more about uh, Oxygen OS on here because kind of like they merged with Color OS a couple of years ago and it, I've never really been the biggest fan of that since. I think Pixel does Android a lot better and, and other phones kind of just have a better interface in my opinion. But at the same time, it really just depends on what you get used to. And I think that after kind of tinkering with this for the past three weeks and, and kind of optimizing the interface for me, I've actually grown to, to like it a lot more than I thought. And I think if somebody used this for a couple months, you would probably really be a big fan of, of Oxygen OS here. I think it does a pretty decent job. You just, 
you just have to get used to the way it's laid out. All right, now a common theme throughout this video has kind of been like the four main things that this fixes compared to other folding phones. And the fourth one, if you remember, was the price. So this actually only comes in one configuration with storage, which is 512 gigabytes which is massive and I was, I was really happy to see that. And it also comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, so pretty stacked on those specs. And it's selling for $16.99. So you're like, oh, well, that's only $100, maybe $200 cheaper than some other foldables. But wait, OnePlus is doing this kind of strange promotion. And it's like, it's an indefinite promotion. It's not just during a certain window. So if you're watching this video in two years, you can still cash in on this. You can trade in literally any phone that works or doesn't work and get $200 off. That'll bring it down to $14.99. Like, like this little tiny, this is the smallest phone I have. It's like it's like $20 and OnePlus is gonna be $200 if I trade it in. So basically the phone is only $14.99, which is just kind of mind blowing for what you're actually getting here. Now, like I said, the software is not my favorite, but I think this sets the bar pretty high for other brands to be more competitive with their pricing and better with their designs. But what do you think about the OnePlus Open? Would you use it?